so I have a presentation I want to do very quickly and wow I'm honored to be here so let's talk let's talk hopefully my screen is showing and uh, my talk is called become powerful this is a talk that I've done a couple of other times this is the uh, black history version So, become powerful. So, we're going to start with this. As I use the term African American, if I use the term black, uh, an African American is simply an American citizen of some level, not necessarily entirely of African descent. And the use of the term black doesn't refer to skin color or hair texture or from a city, a state, a nation, a country, or planet called black. We're not talking about a crayon color, and we're not talking about somebody's legal status. So when I use these terms today, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a person of some level of African or indigenous or aboriginal descent. All right, good. So I'm going to get some people upset right now. Black history is not American history. You're going to hear a lot of people saying that now, but we are global, period, with a T on the end. Uh, and so I, I, I really emphasize as we get powerful that we don't limit ourselves to one time and one place. Powerful people present themselves first and others latch on to them. And I want us, particularly those in the golden fold, to be powerful. I want you to be powerful. And so, I put out a tweet a few days ago, and uh, I'm really kind of emphasizing the same message, and I want to give a little more uh, depth to my statement. So, black history is global. American history is country-based. Part of black history is American history. Part of American history includes black history but we are too globally representative to limit ourselves to our great country. I think it's this time where we should put empowerment over acceptance. Empowerment over acceptance. That's where I'm going. That's moving upwards. That's becoming powerful. So powerful people constantly teach, point to, revere, and pass on their history. So if you go into the... Uh, Guggenheim Museum, you're going to find the, the history of Greek people. You're going to find the history of France. You're going to find the history of Europe and Russia. And nobody says you shouldn't diminish yourselves. You diminish your history. So we have to constantly teach, point to, revere, and pass on our history. So I said we're global people. These are some of the first people in Hawaii. Our people started surfing. These are some of the first people in Hawaii. We are global people. This sister here was the first queen of Hawaii. The first picture is her when she was a teenager. The second picture of her when she was a little older. Uh, later on, the United States annexed, which means they took over the island. These are some of the first Chinese. As you can see by the skin tone, and in the bottom picture, you can see the, uh, the dreads. These are some of the first Chinese people. And you're looking at it saying, that looks like Dequela. That looks like Tommy. That looks like Keon. Yup. We are global. These are some of the first people. These are the first people in the Philippines. Los Negritos. They're also called Agata and also called the Aita. Now, the Philippines is a really interesting place because these were the first people and then other people came and they mixed. Um... So when we look at our Filipino brothers and sisters today, except for those who have um, recent African genetics, we don't necessarily think about these people, but these are the first Filipinos. Now, if you go to the Philippines now on a small section of the island, 
you'll see the Aitas. And so these are obviously recent pictures. We are global. Our history is global. Well, Carter G. Woodson, our frat brother, when he um, started Af you know, Negro History Day, which then became Negro History Week, which he did with some people in his church and some members of his fraternity, Omega South Five Fraternity Incorporated, he wasn't looking at just the blacks in America. He combined himself with other people. Um, one is Arturo Schomburg, a Puerto Rican brother, who can't coin the term Afro-Boricua. And later, Afro Bariqua, when he came to America, he got himself with W.E. Du Bois and some other black thinkers, and this term Afro-American developed. And later, that term Afro-American became African-American. It wasn't developed by um, our frat brother, Jesse Jackson. It happened way before then. But he's some of the first people in Europe. And you can study the Grimaldi. The Grimaldi are the first people in Europe. They were an African people. Uh, this is Saint Maurice. This is Saint Maurice. He was one of the uh, early saints in the Catholic Church. Uh, one of the first popes was black, was a person of African descent. We call them Moors, M-O-O-R. You'll find the word Moor in Europe and it you know, refers to people of African descent who took over Europe for a short period of time in a couple of areas. They actually came over in 711 AD. So when we say, oh, thank heaven for 711 on the commercials, <laughs> Europe says that for us, all right? Um, this is St. Benedict. And these are some other people. So these are some of the early Europeans who are obviously of African descent. We are global people. Uh, some of the things that the Moors brought over to Europe was toothpaste, bathing. In Europe, you can study European history. The kings and queens in Europe, they used to put perfume on all the time because they thought that taking a bath was sinful. And the Moors came in and started saying, nah, y'all need to wash up. Wash your stanky. All right, so the Moors started us washing on a daily basis. Fashion, guitar, crystal glasses. So Brother Ford has on his glasses. I need to put my glasses on so I can read and make sure I don't mess up. Um, but this is all things that came in with the Moors. This is in Germany. This statue is from the 1650 time period in Germany. We are global. This is Queen Charlotte. Charlottesville is named after her. She was one of the queens in Europe. Light-skinned sister, uh, you might say mulatto, you might say mixed, you might say biracial, whatever term you want to go with. In the Americas, you'll find uh, these stone Olmec heads and they have corn rolls. Uh, a brother, one good friend of mine, Dr. David M. Hotep, has a couple of books out, one of called The First Americans Were Africans. So when we think of uh, Indians or Indios, Indios meaning black, um, we really think about people that don't necessarily look like us, but might be part of our family because I have Cherokee. But some of the first people here in the United States area on North America were people of African descent. Some people use the term Moros, and you'll firm people say uh, Aboriginal, Indigenous. So these are our people. We are global. We are ancient and we are modern. Ivan Van Sertema put out a book back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s called They Came Before Columbus. And he talked about how when Christopher Columbus uh, showed up here, his brother, who took notes and wrote down things, said, Hey, there are Moorish people here. There are black people here, as well as these people that they called later Indians. It's in their books. And they look like this. These are some of the depictions. Uh, the colorful picture is, um, um, I think, in Oregon or Utah. I can't remember some of the first Indian people. But these are some. Don't they look like your cousins in them? Don't they look like mom in them? <laughs> <laughs> Mm 
And interestingly enough, you'll see this phenotype. If you look at this woman's face, you'll see that phenotype really heavily in Portsmouth, Virginia. Really heavily in Portsmouth. I worked there for a number of years. That's where I met the uh, beautiful and um, outspoken, the courageous, the well-informed, the soldier for us, Onyx Hicks. So salute her. Uh, in India. So, you know, right now, uh, Kamala Harris, or Kamala, I might say it wrong, is, um, you know, a person of East Indian descent. Well, some of the people in, in her area, this is what they looked like. Let me go back. This is kind of what they looked like in India. So are there blacks in Asia and Malaysia? Um, when we think of Malaysia, we think of this picture. But these were the first people in Malaysia. These are more current pictures of those first peoples. And you're like, hey, that looks like Javier. <laughs> that looks like Roberto, you know? <laughs> that looks like Maria. Yep. Here's some other pictures from South um, East Asia in the Andaman Islands. Now, in 2018, this movie just killed the game. Everybody was, oh yeah, yeah, you know, Wakanda forever. Do it with me. One, two, three. <laughs> and we were uh, introduced to this fictional area called Wakanda, even though there is a Wakanda in Illinois, uh, a city, it's a little small area. But um, we were introduced to this fictional place called Wakanda. Well, let me introduce you to something I find is intriguing. One of the things about you know Black Panther and Wakanda is that Wakanda was an area that most people had never gone to because Wakandans didn't allow anybody to enter. This is the North Sentinel, North Sentinel, Sentinel Islands. This was 2018 when this picture was taken. This is the area where we have not let outsiders come in to this day. These are the people of North Sentinel Island. This is the real Wakanda. They ain't letting nobody in. You come in there, you get hurt. 2018, this young man uh, had some fishers, fishermen, take him to the North Sentinel Island. He was killed. They don't let people come in there. This sister was, uh, you know, this sister was on that boat with him. Uh, she was lucky. These are some of the people that she got a chance to meet. And that's them walking away because the elders showed up after she was playing with the kids. They were like, you got to go. So, once again, when I use the term uh, black, I'm talking about people of African or indigenous or aboriginal descent. And when I use the term African American, I'm talking about a, a citizen of the United States of America who has some level of African descent. But today I want you to be powerful. And I use history because strong people emphasize their history all the time. Weak people do not. A powerful person will talk about their lineage. A powerful person will share some of the things they've accomplished, not to impress you, but to impress upon you what you can do. Weak people talk about what other people do. That's why we have to really hold on to, be proud of, emphasize, point to, revere our history. You know, powerful people, we have valuable people, and we have people with little value. So let me talk about powerful, my concept of powerful. Some people are going to disagree with me, but it's my concept of powerful. The powerful people can hire or uplift or achieve for themselves, and they can uplift anyone else they choose to. We want you to be powerful. Valuable people work for powerful people. People with little value can't take care of themselves, can't hire themselves, can't get hired gainfully, often get trapped in cycles of poverty. So we want you, we want you to be powerful. We want you to be powerful. 
We need more powerful people because we have people returning from difficult situations, returning from imprisonment, returning from mental problems, uh, returning from bad situations. And powerful people can provide for those people who are returning. So to become powerful, you have to move to a different level. So we have to do what people do on other levels. So powerful people make things happen. In your life, I need you to start making things happen. Valuable people watch things happen and learn from it. And people with little value say, what happened? Did you hear about this? I need you to be powerful. I need you to take historical information and make things happen. So-and-so did this. That's my impetus. I'm going to do that. Make things happen. Become powerful. How do you become powerful? You make things happen. You invest. You invest in yourself and you invest in your economics. You save. You save yourself from stupidity and you save economics. You spend last. Powerful people invest first, save second, and spend last. So you're going to hear talk, people talking about balling. You know, that was, that was a great song that uh, Roddy Rich put out last year, the year before, really, uh, about balling. And that, it's a great song and love, but I want you to be the person that sells to the baller. First, valuable people, they spend, then they save, then, then they invest. And people with little value, they spend and they might save a little something. I want you to be powerful, which means in your life, in your high school, in your middle school, in your college, in the military, in the workforce, whatever you do, invest first, save second, spend last. Powerful people use education to gain and maintain power. If you look at rich people, their children always go to higher education. Now you're saying, if I was rich, I ain't need to go to school. You're thinking like a poor person. Because the rich and powerful people always make sure their children go to higher education. They are always getting, it might be college. It might be a training program. It might be the military, then a training program. It might be the military training program, then college. It might be the workforce training program, then military. Then, the, uh, then a training program, then college. But people who are powerful and rich are always investing in education. That way they can gain and maintain power. We've developed some really negative, false information. We've developed and we've believed, a lot of people would see this and they would believe the obverse. They would think that more of us are in jail than in college. Nah. We've learned to believe some really crazy, negative, self-defeating stuff. So how do we change that? We change that by uplifting our history, uplifting our creations, and uplifting our people. Once again, powerful people constantly teach, point to, revere, and pass on their history. America is a proud country. That's why in your high school, in your middle school, you're going to have an American history course. Some of you will have a, uh, a French history course. Some of you may have a German history course. Proud people powerful people always constantly teach point on revere and pass on their history you need to do the same thing you need to do the same we need to do the same powerful people create value and control their creations so if you're a content creator like uh, Queen Onyx Hicks then control that monetize that benefit from that don't just give it away. Create value and control your creations. 
That's what powerful people do. Become powerful. Powerful people consistently make decisions to empower their coveted people. The people that they love, the people that they are around, the people they value. They're always empowering those people. That's what history does. That's what powerful people do. That's what I want you to do. I want you to become powerful. And one last thing. <laughs> it goes for us fellas as well. So your decisions will make you surround yourself with excellence and make history. Surround yourself with excellence and make history and become powerful. 